when Melbourne Keynes was first built, everybody complained that it was all concrete and brutal and brusque and hard. Well, now it's not. Now we've got, frankly, beautiful tree-lined uh, boulevards. And of course, the trees aren't just to look pretty. They were designed quite deliberately in order to absorb the sound of the traffic. I think what I miss is the irregularity of an older town. There's, there's no old churches to see. I'm kind of rather fond of old churches, as you know. There's no sense of the road having evolved. So there are no buildings close to the road. We're not, we're not kind of whistling past old pubs called, I don't know, the Stagecoach or, or the King's Head. One of the problems is I haven't a clue where I am because although I've walked around this town quite a bit, everything looks the same, so I'm trying to find the railway station, and there's just nothing where I go, oh, ah, oh, yeah, I recognise that bit, I go left there. To round off our time trail, we met at a service station to look back at the transport revolutions we'd explored and the towns they'd left behind. I suppose it's a good time to sort of reflect on our little journey over the last few days. I suppose toast to arose because it was a, it was a bit like a service station. Yes, it was. It was, it was, it was. A, yeah, it was a convenient stop off from where it was St Albans, which is a day's right. march from St right. Albans to Toaster. So that's where they all stopped. Off. Oh, good point. I'm not really like that. I mean, the interesting thing about the canals is that they don't really create new towns as, as the railways do and or as the roads did. They more make it possible for towns to grow. And when we looked at that map of Milton Keynes before Milton Keynes happened, you had the Roman road. You've got the canal, you've got the railway, and you've got the motorway. And it's as though Milton Keynes is kind of hedging its bets. It's, it's filling the space between all four of those forms of transport. I mean, we've visited the canals, and they're now sort of a leisure, sort of almost mm -hmm. tourist um, method of transport. Now, I wonder if we'll come back in the future and, and view Newport Pagnell service stations as a sort of tourist <laughs> attraction, it's sort of, you know, a relic from a history. And maybe we'll have moved on from the car. To go on your own transport time trail, here are the main ingredients of ours. To get a sense of how your area has developed, compare maps from different periods. The more detailed, the better. For traces of Roman roads, look for things which don't quite belong. Check out stones for signs of craftsmanship. Consult railways and waterways archives and online sites for information about places that you're curious about. But if you can, it's always best to get up close and personal. Your local history museum will hold information about the development of your region, town or village. And finally, take time to notice the everyday details of the way you travel. What you take for granted could hold the key to its history. And if you're interested in researching your own local history, then visit our website for more information at www.angliatv.com.